Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to The Christian and the Culture, a program designed to help you, the believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, navigate the difficulties that you confront in your daily life. What does the Bible say about the specific challenges that you face? And how should we live now that we belong to the family of God? Joining me are my co-hosts, Pastor Brian Weatherspoon of Tabernacle Harvest Church in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, and Pastor Tim Baldwin of Bethel Deliverance Church Northeast. Gentlemen, would you greet our audience? Uh, thank you so much, Bishop, and Christian and Culture family, so excited to be with you. Move that coffee table. That's right, get it out the way. We have a hot topic. We're ready. Christian and the Culture family, come on in and let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Well, you know what? We're living in very difficult <laughs> times, and they just seem to keep getting worse. But for the believer, none of this should catch us by surprise. In fact, Amos teaches that the Lord God will do nothing unless he reveals it to his servants, the prophets. Mm -hmm. And you are part of that prophetic family. So today we're going to go into a little bit more of the Word of God, dealing with end time, end time events, to do two things. First, to give you comfort to know that God has everything under control and nothing happens without his oversight. Secondly, to give you the wisdom on how to prepare for certain things that will come in our daily lives. Right now in this country, we are seeing a complete breakdown of our government. Mm. Labor unions are fighting against each other. But most importantly, we're seeing a rise in violence and an increase in murders and things of that nature. And you, probably as a Christian, you're wondering how bad will it get? Well, let us tell you right now. It's going to get worse. And the reason for that is America, as well as the world, have ignored the pleas that come from the Word of God. God invites us to a relationship. Yes. And when you ignore that call, you have nothing left to look at but the things of Satan. Today, we're going to try to give you some insight as to what's happening next from God's prophetic calendar and as well as our prophetic understanding. Now, we're not asking everybody to agree with everything we say, but please, we can all agree that God has a definitive plan for his church yes. and the world. Yes. You decide where you want to be wow. in this plan. Gentlemen, we are taught that the next great event that happens in the, the world and in God's prophetic calendar is the rapture of the church. Yes, sir. Now, yes, our problem is, is very complex. <laughs> yeah. That is, there are three views for the rapture that mm. can be biblically substantiated. Sure. Pre-tribulation, post-tribulation, and mid-tribulation. That's right. What do we want to say to the people of God with our particular <laughs> view on the Lord returning to catch away his church? Yeah. And really, is the Lord coming back to, to uh, take his church out of the world before the great tribulation begin, begins? Mm. Yeah, you know, Bishop, that's that's one of those subjects, and just for me personally, that that I constantly wrestle through all of those those right. positions. In jest, I always say I'm a pan tribulist, which means it's going to all pan out in the and end, how, and however it, pans, <laughs> and out, however it right. pans out. But but again, those views can be substantiated by the word. I do believe that there is a plan for the church. There is a plan for Christ to come get his church uh, in the end times. Uh, one of the things that leads me to believe one of the views, and that's not necessarily my view, is that when it talks about the end times and how, how we will be persecuted, makes me think that Christians may be here for the tribulation. Mm. You know, again, it, it's, it's just a view, sure. one, a, a particular sure. view. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of different views from it, but my, my personal um, theology mm -hmm. is that there is a plan for Christ to, to, to come for his church. So you won't commit to a free trip. I won't. I won't. And that's Will the honest truth. Will you commit truth. to any of the tribulation rapture positions? I, no, because I've looked at them all. And again, they can all be on some level substantiated okay. um, from a biblical perspective. But again, my, I, I, where I really rest is there's a plan for Christ to plan. come back for his church. The okay. parousia, the second coming Pastor? is yeah. is imminent. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a pre-trib person. Okay. I, I do believe uh, that... The, the righteous will not suffer the same judgment as the unrighteous. However, I don't think we'll be unscathed, meaning I don't think we're going to get out of it with no hints of persecution. 
no feeling of maybe even isolation after a certain point. And as you look at the world and church now, you start to see that we are becoming smaller in number. And the world is doing like this. The church, uh, true believers, are kind of becoming a smaller group. So you're going to feel some level of isolation, some level of disconnect from the world before Christ comes. And I don't think we'll have the worst part of it, but I do think we'll know that we're being pulled out of a situation that's going to get even worse. And next PowerPoint is, I also believe pre-tribulation. I just don't believe God uh, uh, will cause the righteous to go through the same way as those that are unrighteous. And a few examples of Sodom and Gomorrah and a few others that were delivered out. Uh, God even makes a countdown. I'm sorry, Abraham makes a countdown with God. And God says, listen, for the righteous, I'll sustain. If there's no righteous, I'm going to go ahead and judge. And so, you know, from those perspectives, I have a pre-tribulation perspective. Now, some people may say that that perspective is an escapism sort of perspective, that, that again, yeah. that the church doesn't want to experience tribulation, that we don't want to, ex we don't want to experience the hardship of uh, uh, being persecuted. Now, again, it's just a, it's just a view, it's, sure, it's, you know, sure. and, um, and so my question from that perspective becomes, yeah. you know, because the scriptures tell us that, that there are going, that we're going to be persecuted that the church is going to be persecuted. And I one of Pastor tough. Brian's favorite terms is Americananity. Yep. In Americananity, we have no concept of persecution no, no, no. at all. No, and, and uh, I don't know anyone in their right mind who signs up for persecution. No, you're, and you're right about that. <laughs> no, you're so, right. And, I, and I say that to the folks who claim escapism. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? Uh, something, there's something about the nature and the heart of God. When we study scripture, yeah. we're not just looking for blueprint. I'm sorry, for bullet points. We're looking for his heart. And so when I search his heart, I think this part's in there where he shows, listen, for mine, I'm going to do a little something extra. For the unrighteous, though you've had time to be mine, uh, you, you, you're probably going to find yourself on the other side of that wrath. And, uh, but not necessarily in escapism. I don't believe we would be untouched. Yeah. I think you're going to have, a, have to make a distinct decision to be for Christ, and it could be costly. Mm. Absolutely. That's interesting. Uh, can we say then that there is no difference between the church and the nation of Israel. Difference in, in terms of what? Promise, position, future. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah no, we've been grafted in. You okay. know, we, so, we've been, so we've been grafted in as, as, as heirs and joint heirs. And so, so if we've been grafted in, then the Palestinian covenant applies to us. The concept of God telling Joshua, every place you set the sole of your feet, I'm going to give it to you, which is in line with the Palestinian covenant. Does the church have the right to claim that passage? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't, I don't, I don't so think so. So there are promises and positions that were for the people of Israel. Of that, that time, that absolutely. That do not apply to us. Absolutely. Yes. So yeah. then Daniel says that the 70th week is for the nation of Israel. True. So would that mean then it's not for the church? It's not for the church. Would that mean that it's not for the church? It's not <laughs> for the church. Okay. If it's not for the church and the 70th week is uh -huh. the tribulation time. Right. And Zechariah says that it's designed to purge the rebels from Israel. From Israel. Then what point would it be to put the church through it? There's, there is no point for me. Yeah, but again, I'm going to argue on the other side of that. That's fine. Yeah, I'm going to argue on the other side of that. And again, just to play devil's advocate, sure. the, uh, from a scriptural perspective, I, I believe that that tribulation will come to test our mettle. Mm -hmm. That tribulation but what will be the point in taking the people of God that are born again sure. through that time that's designated for as the 70th week sure. for God's people. What would be the point if they can never be Jews? Yeah, well, again, if, if, if we had the answer to that, <laughs> you know, I, at the end of the day, my position still... <laughs> Is it going to pan out? It's going. It is. However, but, this pans out. Yeah, but but again, I, I I totally get what Bishop is saying. He's backing me into a corner. No, but, uh, no, no. Slightly. It's, no, it's, a, it's a good. It's no, a, but it's a it's a it's a real issue no, for really our is. people yeah. in this culture because yeah. the is. argument that's happening. Historically, the church, the first century church, believed in the coming of the Lord. Right. That's yes, why did. Paul 
yes, is so did. insistent mm -hmm. upon it. Yes. As we continue to migrate through cultural changes and adjustments yeah. that are reflective in our doctrinal changes, yes. now that view has changed. Right, right. We've almost settled into the quote unquote comfort, if you will, sure. of saying that's not going to happen sure, because sure. of all we're going through. Right. There's no passages of scripture that validate the church's universal persecution. No, it does not. None. It does not. And, and that's, Bishop, you, you just hit it on the head. Uh, the one thing I was going to say, we're, we're speaking as if the church isn't already undergoing persecution. There are plenty of places that the church is not so public and that it will cost you your life to say that you're a believer. And they are being slaughtered and they are being martyred. So it is happening already. So it isn't like uh, no believer is going through it. American Christianity is slightly different. And you know, we call that Americananity. <laughs> uh, it, it's a softer approach to Christianity right, right. for a time. Right. But I do think the time is coming even for American believers where we're gonna feel the pinch a little bit. It may not get that extreme, but we're gonna feel the pinch before we get out. I do yeah, but, believe it. But, but Paul writes about trials and tribulation and persecution yeah. for the church. Paul writes about it. And so that on some level, let's even remove the thought right now of, of rapture. Mm -hmm. Like tribulation is coming to the church, or the global church, not the isolated church in some far off country. I believe the church on some level is going to be persecuted because that's what the scriptures, that's what the scriptures tell us. Now we, we want to reintroduce mm -hmm. the, the, the rapture piece again, <laughs> back into the, the equation. Yes, yes. The ch it, it's according to scripture, it, we're going to be persecuted on some level because I hear, I keep hearing Pastor Brian say, like we, we're not gonna be totally clean. We're gonna get a little bit. No, we're gonna a, get touched. Yeah, I, I yeah. believe yeah, no, that the believe church that there's coming a day where we may have to make a stand with our lives. I, I think that day is coming. That doesn't mean it's the tribulation period. Got you, got you. Right? So it doesn't mean that it's that time. Sure. But I do believe we're going to have a time where we're going to have to be very distinct. That's what I said earlier. Be very distinct. Make a decision as to whose side you're on. Right. And I think the Lord simply uses that for an eternal purpose as well. You know, who's mine and who's not? Let the wheat and the tares grow together. I know who's who. So just keep doing it. I know who's who. We and serve he knows a God. how to sift. Do you agree, gentlemen, that we serve a God that's a covenant-making God? He is. Okay. Yeah. And he made a covenant with Abraham's seed. Yes, he did. And the nation of Israel evolves from that. Yes. They have specific promises. They have specific uh, prophetic directives mm -hmm. and things that we could never apply. Yes. But then the Bible says we're partakers of a better covenant. Yes. The gist of the better covenant is what? Is grace. Okay. Yeah. That enables it's God to live inside yeah. of Absolutely. us. Absolutely. All right. You, you speak to the church undergoing persecution, but it's not like the Israelites nationally, because in Matthew's gospel, Jesus says, you will be hated of all nations yeah. because of me. And we're seeing that mm -hmm. today. Yes. Mm -hmm. As of the day of this taping, mm -hmm. we're seeing yes. nations surround Israel. I Israel. mean, Israel... Uh, as of the day of our taping, Israel has already undergone a significant attack, yes. and people are fighting against Israel for defending itself. For defending so we're Israel. seeing Matthew True. 24, 25 mm -hmm. come That's to fruition. Out. Yes, sir. All right. But what type of persecution can we put to the church in light of that persecution? Yeah. Are, we, are we to say that we're going to go through a genealogical persecution, or we're going to go through a... Um, a covenant persecution, or will it simply be a satanic onslaught to try to get us to fall away? Boom. Yeah, I think I think more of a satanic, absolutely, which has away. been going which on since going the on. first century, yes, which sir. has been going on yes. since the first century. But the American church, we have we have no concept of no, not to a great real no. persecution no. at all because we, Satan was smart enough to mix capitalism and money yep. in right. with our life. So right. we, don't, we don't think in terms of persecution. That's right. why you have people who say, I'm going through, what's wrong? My cable went out. No Wi-Fi. <laughs> you know, yeah, I had no, no Wi-Fi. Wi <laughs> and, and, right. and they look at that as, you know, God's coming against you because no. you're watching that. No. My, my point is, is this, um, 
many people are watching and they're they're yes. they're questioning it. Sure. Just like sure. we're bringing around the table. And uh, one of the greatest examples of a pre-trib position, and like mm -hmm. Pastor Tim said, it can be scripturally validated depending sure. upon how you how you interpret sure, scripture. Sure. But from Revelation chapter two and three, we see the talk to the churches. True. All right. All seven of those churches there. There were really ten in that area. Yeah. But Jesus highlights seven, seven for some seven. reason because yeah. that's that's, right. that's what he does. He likes to aggravate people. That's right. <laughs> so he only deals with seven. But then when we go into the fourth chapter, it yeah. begins with come up hither. And then from four on, there's no reference of Christians anymore. Right. 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 As significant as we well. are right. in every epistle, there's a reference to Christians. Yeah. But when we get to Revelation 4, yeah. there's no more reference. You just hear come up hither. That's it. And then the scene opens and you see elders yep. sitting around the throne. Right. An elder right. is a church office. Right. True. And uh, the only other time we saw it uh, uh, was when David uh, installed the, the Levitical priesthood and That's broke right. them up into 24 That's houses exactly right. so that now this is why we have 24 elders exactly which are right. representative of that so here we are Very now good, let's just say for argument's sake that you jumped over and said i'm a pre-trib all right so for the believer that's watching mm -hmm. us now who's confronted by all the doctrinal uh, uh interpretations how should we prepare mm -hmm. for the inevitable return of the lord are there things we should be doing, even though it happens by faith and we have no, sure. no, no argument as to sure. when it happens? Are there things we should be doing? Because when I first became a, a Christian, we were told, don't go to the movies, don't do this, don't do that. Because if right. you did, you would miss the rapture. Yeah. Yeah. So that true. kept us in check. That's true. That was yeah. Pharisaical control that kept us in check. Yeah. Are there things that people need to do if we are agreeing that there is a pre-trib rapture? Sure. Are, we, uh, are there things that our audience can do to be ready when that comes? Mm -hmm. I, I think absolutely. It's, it's to live out the word of God. Mm -hmm. um, and my mindset is this, until all have heard. And so yeah. my responsibility is to make sure that those in my sphere of influence mm -hmm. hear the gospel, right. see and experience the kingdom of God through my life. And I think every believer should have the same mindset until all have heard. You know, we, we have this concept that that Christ will come when the last person who's supposed to hear the gospel, you know, hears the gospel. We, uh, scripture doesn't substantiate that. Right. But mm -hmm. but but in the interim, while we are living here in this earth, our responsibility is to make sure that people know who Christ is. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's really that simple. We, we, we could take out all of the minutia, all of the, you know, all of the things that are not really important and say, whose life am I impacting mm. with the gospel of Christ and the message of the kingdom? Yeah. You know, wow. and, and I think that's, that's, that's one good. place we that's should live. Right. Yeah, I think, you know, continue to promote the kingdom uh, because that's what Jesus came to institute was his kingdom. Uh, a lot of people just call it the gospels, but Jesus came to enact the kingdom yes, in the planet. Yes, sir. You and I are stewards of that kingdom. We're supposed to uphold it and continue to let the world know that that kingdom is coming. Uh, secondly, I think we have to learn to live unspotted, yeah. right? You know, lessen the blemishes. Uh, There's no perfection, but... As much as you know and as much as, you know, the greatest student you are should be of yourself. You know where you're spotted. And mm. start to begin to pray and ask God to help you to clean those areas up so that when he comes, that like will breed and look for like. And, and so I think we have to try to get rid of as many blemishes on our own lives as, as we can in, in light of the Lord's word. That's a, that's a, uh, a good admonition. Both of you uh, live unspotted begin to change and, and, and make those necessary adjustments to make disciples. Yes. But I hear a lot about this kingdom thing you mentioned yeah. on a regular basis. Yes, and it frustrates the bejeebies out of me <laughs> because Jesus presents it in a way that's like enigmatic. You, yeah. you, nobody ever walked. That's why they were always looking for physical realities to it. Sure. He said, I, I can't I can't show you that. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. it doesn't come by observation. Yeah. But yet when you theorize it, it's yeah. almost as if there is an observation. Yeah. yeah and so yeah. you hear a lot of people talking about the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. The kingdom, the kingdom. Yeah. 
what is that yeah. to, to our listeners yeah. who are going to walk away from this broadcast yes. saying, okay, I have to be a legislator of the kingdom. Yeah. What are you really saying to them yeah. when you say we, we got to advance the kingdom? Yeah, uh, I, you know, one of the things Jesus said is study my kingdom, study how it works, okay. right? Uh, uh, seek ye first the kingdom and, and all these other things to be added. So there's a principle of his kingdom that he wants us to know. Now the observance isn't the, uh, like I would like to say, all the super spiritual things, but the observance is there, there is a nature of that kingdom that Jesus left, right? So uh, for instance, in that kingdom, uh, there are rules you have to abide by. Learn those now. Learn how to obey. Learn how to honor. Honor is very high in the kingdom of God. Um, uh, learn the principle of even praise, adoration. It's high up on God's list. Uh, we talked about earlier, submission. It's, it's, a, it's a kingdom principle that Jesus says, study how my kingdom works, yeah. basically, because this is where you're coming. All right, so you're, you're not gonna go to be in the cosmos. You're gonna go to an actual kingdom, live in a place where other believers, angels, and all kinds of other creatures are there with us. Learn how that kingdom works. And that's what he told us to do, study my kingdom. Yeah, Jesus, Jesus uh, teaches in one of his parables, he says, the kingdom of God is like a mustard like seed, too, yes. right? And then he goes on to say, this mustard seed is the smallest seed, we know that, yeah. but it grows into this great tree. Yes. And then birds come and perch in this tree. Yes. And so you talked about yeah, nature. Yeah. The nature of the kingdom is that it has the ability or it should benefit other people. Yes. Mm -hmm. There should be a benefit to other people when we show up. That nature. Right, that, that absolutely. Yes, and so yes, if yes. we're talking about that kingdom piece, yes. then if we, in, if we are instituting and partnering mm -hmm. with like kingdom advance, yes. it should definitely benefit other people yes. and other in, in the environment around us. Can I jump back on, on good, can I good. segue you back in? Guys. <laughs> Why did y'all say this at the beginning of the podcast? Because Pastor Brian, you didn't ask about the kingdom. I know. I, I, I'm living in the kingdom now. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the kingdom heart now. But the kingdom is so deep, uh, so beautiful, that it had moments where even when Jesus is gone, that kingdom operates. You know, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't the brothers that went and broke Peter out of prison. It was an angel from that kingdom that came yeah. at, at the behest of God's word to bring him out. Uh, you know, there's angels even over in Old Testament that were there to lead the children of Israel out. So there's a kingdom that has citizenship already and at, at different will, depending on who you are, depending on your assignment, that kingdom can interrupt the regularly scheduled program for those that are citizens of that kingdom. Hallelujah. Hey guys, I, 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 <laughs> here we are coming to a close in this broadcast. And you, 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 you provoke my mind <laughs> to this simplistic thought that if the kingdom is all that you say, yeah. then we being citizens of that kingdom should transport that kingdom, its mm -hmm. rules, its principles, its blessings, its all the other things in that kingdom to here. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yes, sir. So there's no poverty in, in the kingdom of God. No. There shouldn't be. So then when we are showing up, we're showing up to help meet the needs of those Absolutely. who are living in yes. poverty. Yes. Yes. There's no sickness in that kingdom. The, the list goes on and on. Yes. Right? Yes. 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 So there's a tremendous challenge with what you gentlemen are saying. Yes. And, and it just takes a lot more time than what we have. <laughs> yes. Well, I tell you, listen, <laughs> saints of God, we're sorry. We're sorry oh, we man. have just, just warmed you up and now we got to drop you oh, off <laughs> and move on to the next time. Oh, but man. listen, we want you to know Jesus mm. is coming and don't get wrapped up. Be like Pastor Tim. He'll get here when he gets here. Yes. In the meantime, I am a person who is helping to bring the reality of the kingdom yes. into the lives around me. So where there is hatred, let me sow love. When I find poverty, let me be an instrument to help those yes. who are impoverished. When there is doubt and, and sickness and disease, let me be a vessel to God yes. and of God to help bring something to lift the spirits of those who have been affected by satanic powers. It is a tremendous job, a great responsibility, but it is one that you can accomplish. Yes. So we encourage you today to be agents of God's kingdom, mm. to demonstrate his love, his power, his grace, yes. and let the world say, we see Christ in you. Yes. God bless you and thanks for joining us. And the good Lord willing, we'll be with you again on another exciting episode of The Christian and the Culture.
The Christian and the Culture is produced and recorded in the studios of Lighthouse TV. Positively different. God knows more than what he has revealed to you. You're dealing with an infinite God and he doesn't have to tell you everything. Doctrine are the words that Jesus left. One of the main things we're called to do as the body of Christ, how we're going to win and overcome, is by keeping the doctrine. Now, the little horn is what we would call the Antichrist. Satan has always had somebody prepared to come to that position in every generation. People of God are raving about the Understanding End Time Events and Prophecy Conference. Ryan says, this conference broke down the scriptures into pieces that I could easily understand. Kyle offers, this conference helped bring a greater sense of urgency for me to share with the world the hope that lies within us as sons and daughters of God. And Doug adds, I would recommend any believer serious about their Bible to take a look at what this conference has to offer. This four session conference of teaching and dialogue will help you to better comprehend what the scriptures say about the last days. For your love offering of $30 or more, receive a copy of the entire seminar on CD or DVD. Call 1-800-550-3284 to order your copy today. The Bethel Deliverance app is now available to download for free at Apple Store and Google Play. You can tune into Sunday services through live stream, view video sermons on demand, listen to audio messages through podcasts, send prayer requests, communicate through social media, and you can contribute to the ministry simply by using today's technology. Get access to all of Bethel's media outlets and church events right at your fingertips. Go to the Apple Store or Google Play and download Bethel Deliverance to get connected today. Praise the Lord. I'm Bishop Eric Lambert. I want to welcome you to the Eric Lambert Ministries website. On this website, you will be able to get information about books, CDs, DVDs, and even the printed word designed to help you in your walk with Christ. You'll find information about our YouTube channel and the services that we have at Bethel Deliverance International Church. And we want you to understand that our ministry is designed to lift up Jesus, to glorify his name, and to get you, the listener, connected to the power of the Holy Ghost. I am excited about the Eric Lambert Ministries website, and I want you to join us as often as you can, and we guarantee two things. You'll have a closer walk with Jesus. Number two, your life will be richer. God bless you. Access resources that will enrich your Christian walk today by visiting ericlambertministries.org. That's ericlambertministries.org. The Christian and the Culture is a production of Bethel Deliverance International Church. For more information about our media ministry or to partner with us, visit BethelDeliverance.org and go to the media outreach link to make a donation. You can also call 215-885-2585 to speak with a media representative. Thank you for watching. Be blessed.